Welcome back to another episode of the Spa Business Mastery Podcast. And I'm Delia, and I'm back again with another episode of Spa Marketing with Delia. And today, I have another special guest. Uh, last month, I had Drew on from Search and Social, and today I have Cassie on from Search and Social. And she is a social media expert, and she's going to talk to us today about the power of TikTok, especially for spa businesses. So thanks, Cassie, for joining me today. I'm so happy to have you here. Thank you. Yeah, I'm so excited to be here. Um, I am absolutely obsessed with TikTok. I have so much to say about it. So I'm glad to be sitting down and, and chatting it out with you. Awesome. I'm excited about TikTok too, because I find like, you know, we're so used to Facebook and Instagram and TikTok. Well, it's not like new, it's still the new kid on the block. And um, sometimes, you know, navigating the TikTok world is a little bit different than the other platforms that we're, that we're used to. So we want to share today, um, you know, how you can use TikTok to, um, you know, empower your your business. Um, and so, I know a lot of spa owners are are maybe hesitant to get into the TikTok trend, <laughs> um, but there are some really good benefits to using TikTok. So, Cass, like, what would you say would be the key benefits, especially for spa owners, when utilizing TikTok? Yeah, I would say the the thing I love most about TikTok in the world of social media is the power behind the reach and the possibilities behind the reach are just something that we're not seeing on any other platform. Um, so if you use it correctly, um, and I know that it can be an intimidating start, um, but my, my best advice is literally just to create an account, start scrolling and, and start kind of putting out a little bit of content and just kind of testing the waters. Um, I think people like, like I said, it's, it can be quite intimidating, but once you get your, your feet wet, you know, it's, it's really not that scary. And I think you would be surprised in the analytics, you know, just the first few videos that you are going to put out there compare the reach to Instagram, to Facebook. And, and I think once you see those numbers, you'll realize the, the, how important it is to invest your time and energy, um, and potentially your dollars into, into this platform. Yeah, absolutely. Um, cause it's, you know, just growing and growing and growing. And I've even noticed just even, I don't have a business account, but my own personal accounts, <laughs> right. I get way more, way more reach than I would, um, on my Instagram definitely so today uh today's topic is six tiktok tips that's a little bit of a tongue twister for spa owners to dominate on social media um so we want to talk about um creating engaging content and so we're going to dive into some uh very specific uh tips for creating tiktok videos and creating that engaging content um so we want to talk about some of the key elements that you as spa owners should be considering when crafting your tiktok content so We'll dive right into the first one. And the first one is to leverage TikTok trends. Cass, can you tell us a little bit about these trends? Because I know that that word floats around there. You got to get on the trends. You got to get on the trends. Yeah, I would say trends is the most approachable step to, um, you know, engaging in TikTok, especially if you're a first timer. Um, basically, you know, trending audios, um, anything that's like, I don't know what's something that's trending on TikTok right now that we can use an example you know mm -hmm. um I'm oh I'm actually yeah what is trending on? I TikTok? feel like my entire feed has existed of like three TikTok audios that I've just been it's like the one country song the Beyonce song <laughs> <laughs> the dances like anything like that that you can take because the way the algorithm works is if there's a trending sound um or a trending hashtag something like that the app is already pushing content to people's for you pages that are using those trending sounds so if you can find a way to incorporate your business model or um, you know, if it's, you know, a facial or something that your business is offering into that TikTok sound, you're basically latching on to the algorithm and allowing the algorithm to do the dirty work for you. Um, and that's where you're really going to see a lot of reach. So it's kind of like casting a larger net um, and, and, and seeing what you're going to get from that. Does that make sense? 
total sense. And you can, if you go on the explore page, there'll be, you know, some top trending um, posts there as well. So if you're looking for like, how do I find, you know, how these hashtags or sounds or, or, or um, audios are trending, I'd suggest going on there. Is that what you would suggest to cast? Yeah, hundred percent. And honestly, um, like credit other creators, but I would say if you're, if you're looking for a place to start, find some trends, find some people in your industry that are executing these trends really well and try and mimic what they're doing. You know, use that as ideas for inspiration to execute your own content. I find that's the easiest place to start. Yeah. Perfect. Awesome. All right. And so the next one is use eye catching visuals. So you know, TikTok and like all social media platforms, we scroll. And so we need to find something that isn't going to be boring. <laughs> we need it to be visibly striking so that your content stands out because you want people to stop their scroll. So Cass, what are your suggestions as far as using these eye-catching vis visuals? How do we get there? Yeah. Number one, I would say go buy yourself a really good lighting setup. Um, I think that's so important, a really good and a good video camera. So if you have any new ish phone, you're going to be good to go, but lighting is so, so important. Um, and yeah, I would say the combination of those two, just video quality and lighting in general, um, that's kind of your foundation. Um, and then yeah, bright colors, faces, um, which I know is very intimidating. A lot of people <laughs> have a lot of hesitation around being on camera, but if you can kind of get past that or find someone, you know, in your spa who is willing to be on camera, maybe it's a client, um, you know, your admin assistant, anyone really who's comfortable with putting their face on there. We are a human at the end of the day. Humans want to interact with humans. We love seeing people's faces. Um, so yeah, great lighting, using people um, and, and good quality camera. Awesome. And then we also want to talk about the third one, which is incorporating user-generated content. So um, that's content that you're going to get from um, your clients, um, your mm -hmm. team, if they are taking pictures. So let's talk a little bit about that, Cass. For sure. Yeah, I would say, um, you know, there's things that you can do um, from a larger scale marketing perspective that are going to support this. So, um, you know, I know, Dili, we've talked a lot with our clients about creating like an Instagram photo wall or, you know, a photo op or a video op, or maybe you have a giveaway contest where they're saying tag us in your TikTok, you know, um, do a review in your car at the end of your procedure or your treatment and tell us how it went and, you know, get entered to win a free facial next month, stuff like that, that, you know, it doesn't cost your business a lot, but the reach that you're going to see from that is going to be so rewarding. Um, that is really key. You want people to be talking about your business on social media. So thinking about it from two different avenues, your own social media presence. So your own, your businesses, TikTok presence. Um, and then, you know, where we really see businesses be quite successful is where you kind of create that conversation on TikTok about your business. Um, I see that a ton with influencers, you know, Alex Earl, has totally taken off. And a very big part of that was because she had other people creating conversations. Who is this girl, Alex Earl? Like, who are we talking about? And all of a sudden, you know, now she, all those people are doing her marketing for her. Yes. Um, so that relates to business as well. You know, let people do the marketing for you. That's awesome. I love that. Yeah. Let your clients do have, I mean, if you think about it, you know, word of mouth is always kind of your best advertisement. And now that we've got, you know, all these online platforms that we can use, like let's, ex we can expand that, that word of mouth, not just to our little, you know, hundred percent. I, yeah, that's my favorite thing to tell people is social media is essentially just a very, very large form of word of mouth marketing. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. All right. And number four is ad captions and text overlays. So you have to always remember that um, a lot of us are, are watching these videos with our sound down. Um, so when you've got those text overlays and those would just be, you know, a little, a little caption that goes over top of your, your video so that when people are scrolling, um, they can see what your message is. And, you know, even if you don't have that audio there, they'll still be interested as long as you've got that 
um, kind of compelling caption that, that's there, you want to catch their attention. So what are some of the things that um, spa owners cash should be doing to make sure that they're clear and concise? Mm -hmm. My favorite content to watch on TikTok is a little bit longer form um, with people speaking to the camera. Mm -hmm. And I find, you know, on my personal TikTok and for clients that I've worked for, that is probably the highest performing content that I've come across um, and the most powerful, the most engaging. And you can communicate the most rather than, you know, just participating in a trend and a little dance or whatever you're going to do. Um, so using those keywords, the other thing that's so interesting about the kind of text and the text overlays and your captions is it, it works with the TikTok algorithm almost like SEO does for a website. So TikTok is really going to pick up on, you know, if you say Medispa a hundred times during your 60 second video, um, they are going to know clean cut exactly who to show this video for. You know, it's it, people who are interested in Medispas. Along with that, if you say that, if you add the text overlay so that the word Medispa is popping up in your video and you have that in your caption and you have it in a hashtag, you are making it crystal clear to TikTok who your audience is and who you want to push this video to. So if you come at it from that perspective, almost as like, this is an SEO tool, um, who is my TikTok audience? What are they looking up? You know, are they looking up, oh, like, you know, hormonal acne, all of a sudden I'm in my late twenties and my skin is totally flaring up. How do I fix this? Think about that and create, like use that to create your videos, use it in the copy. Um, and then, yeah, exactly in your hashtags, in the captions as well. Love it. Love it. That's great. That's great advice. So number five, and I know you had uh, just mentioned um, when we were talking about the captions and the text overlay is different video links and, and speaking. So you want it. Number five is test different video links. So, um, mm. you know, there's a lot of shorter videos. They they tend to perform well on, on TikTok, but I think that they've just recently released in the last little while anyways, longer video form. Mm -hmm. So what would you yeah. say as far as like your experience with that um, and testing those different video links? Yeah, um, the interesting thing about this is, you know, TikTok is is in competition with YouTube. It's in competition with Instagram. Um, I would say YouTube for the most part, like that's where you're going to go for your long form content. And now YouTube Shorts has come out with YouTube shorts, which is, you know, that short form content. So they're kind of filling that quota as well. Um, so I think to, to be competitive with YouTube, TikTok has started prioritizing longer form videos. Um, it also makes it, you know, the whole point of this algorithm is to have people spend as much time on this app as possible. So the longer you can get people engaging with your video and watching your video, the more your video is going to be rewarded. So for example, if you're putting out a seven second video and I'm watching that two times over and then I'm swiping, um, it's going to perform lower than if you're putting out a 60 second video and you, you know, everyone is watching up until 45 seconds and then liking or saving, mm -hmm. um, and, you know, maybe I'm even coming back to that because it's a skincare routine that I want to, you know, there's some new products in there. Like, Oh, I didn't think about that. That's something I want to incorporate into my nightly routine. You know, next, next time I'm, I'm shopping online for my new skincare routine, I'm going to go pull that video back up, refer to it, you know, I'm watching it a few times over, anything like that, that engage worthy, save worthy content, um, which is typically coming in that longer form, that is really where you're going to see, um, see those analytics start to kind of skyrocket. Um, and you just, you know, you definitely with anything, you want to make sure that you're always testing you know, the different variations of it. So Definitely, don't test yeah. it out, see how your short, shorter videos are performing versus your longer ones. And, yeah. you know, you want to make sure that you're going back and you're looking at those analytics so that you can repeat what's working. So if you do have a following yeah. that is obviously, you know, preferring longer videos, then keep, keep doing that. So, yeah. Yeah. You said that perfectly. And I think that's also such a great way, such a great way to help guide your content creation is, 
yeah, take, you know, dabble in different areas, do long form, do short form, mm -hmm. see what works. And eventually something is going to work and then recreate that, you know, what, and pay attention to, you know, what do you think actually, you know, made people st stay, made people share that video, um, pay attention to those factors and, and recreate them. All right. And number six is stay authentic and genuine. I mean, nobody wants to have, you know, be sold to, nobody wants it to feel like they're being sold to, or that it's just, um, you know, they want to make sure that they want to know that you're a real person, you know, Kath, how can you show your, your human side, um, a little bit more so that we can be more authentic and genuine. Yeah. Um, this is probably my favorite tip that we are giving today. Um, at the end of the day, like I said, we're just, we're all human and we just want to connect with each other. And, um, you know, long gone are the days of, of Instagram highlight reels and, and, you know, Photoshopped whatever and picture perfect timelines, like people of TikTok want to see, you know, makeup free. They want to see no filter. They want to see your genuine and authentic experience. And I think there's so much that we can share as business owners that will speak to that. Um, and, and, and again, it's like the selling without selling, you want to sell yourself. You want to just take it from the perspective of you're, you're really just here to connect with other people and maybe to create this community. And once you have that community, the sales will come. I promise you, um, you know, but at the end of the day, we just, we want to create that kind of community mindset. And then that community is going to support you and they're going to come through. Well, and if you think about it as well, you know, like doing business with somebody, if you just saw a bunch of, um, you know, filtered images of maybe before and afters and things like that, like that's not real. And you want people to be able to actually see who you are and what they can expect when they come into your, into your business. Right. So if it's a complete shift from who you are online versus what you do in, in spa, um, yeah. you know, it's going to be a bit of a disconnect for your, for your followers and for potential clients. Yeah. A hundred percent. So, all right. So those are our, our six, um, our six TikTok video tips. So we had leveraging TikTok trends using eye-catching videos, um, incorporating user-generated content, adding captions and text overlays, um, testing different video lengths and staying authentic and genuine. So once we have all of these little tips and tricks in play and they're working and you're, you're, you know, playing around and you're testing different things, Cass, is there anything that um, beyond that creating content, like how can we maximize that engagement? So if we are getting, you know, more reach on, on a post then how can we kind of keep that momentum going? Yeah, I would say, um, be in the comment section, you know, everyone is always in the comment section. So replying to absolutely everyone. Um, if you have a video that is kind of popping off, um, reply in, to comments with other videos. So, you know, if you're posting about a new skincare product and someone says, oh, you know, I, you didn't get a chance to explain in the video, like, what is your favorite part about this product? Answer those questions with other videos. Um, that's how you're going to get people to stay on your page. And again, we're just telling the algorithm, you know, we're creating a community here um, and, and we're keeping people on our page and they like the content that we're producing. So, so the algorithm, algorithm will favor that. Well, and again, even when you're commenting back, it makes it like it, it's showing that there's actually a person behind this, right? Definitely. So it's not just, you know, a bot answering, you know, uh, answering comments and things like that. You're actually going in there and you're, and you're being a part of the conversation with your potential clients and your followers, right? Yeah. What about um, hashtags? Is there anything uh, different that we need to know uh, with um with TikTok hashtags versus let's say Instagram hashtags. I know that yeah. there's, there's like huge uses on TikTok. <laughs> so for these, for these hashtags, like in the billions I've seen, right? Yes. Yeah. I would say um, the biggest thing with hashtags on TikTok. So if, you know, you're creating an, an hashtag strategy on Instagram, you want to use all 30 of those hashtags for sure. On TikTok, I would say, 
niche down. It's very important that we find our niche on TikTok and, um, you know, kind of how I spoke to um, using text in, in the caption, in the copy, um, and, and in the actual video, you want to use that same kind of niche text in your hashtags. So just be very, very direct, you know, think about who is my audience and what are they looking up? Because those are the hashtags that are going to get favored. So, you know, maybe instead of something as generic as hashtag Medispa, you know, hashtag um, nightly skin routine, something like that, where, you know, that's something I would look up as uh, personally, that's something I would look up or, you know, what do I want to buy at Sephora this month? Okay. Like Sephora skincare haul, you know, something like that. Be intentional about your hashtags and, and only use a few of them, I would say. Right. And, you know, it's okay to use, you know, Sephora skincare haul because it's still a hashtag that's going to get eyeballs on your account and you're going to prove to them that um, your products are going to be uh, better or they're going to work. <laughs> Maybe a little e influencing video. Why aren't we shopping at skincare or at Sephora for our skincare products yeah. now? Why should I be shopping at your Medispa for them instead? Yeah. Awesome. All right. That's all great info. One last piece. Um, now I know you all spa owners, you're not into your analytics and, and metrics, um, that kind of thing. Cause you know, it can be a little intimidating as far as like, how do you read these? How do you read your analytics and your metrics? So is there anything, uh, just kind of very basic, is there any specific metrics that spa owners should be focusing on when they're reviewing the content that's worked? I would say the, the, the metric that I pay attention to the most are comments and saves or shares. Um, that is, you know, at the end of the day, going to be the highest reaching something that I'm going to watch and send that to my friend or send it to my mom. You know, that's the highest performing content. Um, so really paying attention to what am I putting out there that people feel is share worthy or save worthy um, or, you know, what are they engaging with engaged worthy? Um, those would be the ones that I'm, that I would pay attention to the most. Awesome. And yeah, make sure that you're kind of tracking that a little bit so that you can refer back to it when you are creating, hopefully in advance, you're trading, you're creating your, your content mm -hmm. a little bit in advance. So you're not posting on the fly. However, I will say it is okay to post on the fly for certain things, especially if you're wanting to hop on some of those trends, right? So yeah. Um, but you still want to have, make sure you've got your, your kind of strategy worked out and your, your, um, you know, creating that content ahead of time. So, all right. I think that's all for us for today, Cassie, thank you so much. Your expertise is always appreciated. And, um, if you need to reach out to us, uh, for any support or help, uh, we do offer social media management packages. So if this is something that, uh, you don't want to do on your own. It maybe feels a little too time consuming, or maybe you're not quite ready to get yourself on camera yet and you need some support. You can reach out to us. You can uh, email me at Delia at virtualspabusinessmarketing.com, D-E-L-I-A at virtualspabusinessmarketing.com. So thank you everybody for listening and be sure to tune into um, our next episode of the Spa Business Mastery podcast. I'll be back again next month. And Kirsten will be back in a few weeks with her business market or with her business podcast. So till next time, keep, keep those uh, videos going, people. <laughs> Thank you. <Kat. laughs> Amazing. Thank you so much for having me, Delia.